Hello there, welcome back to the Bet Monkey Show. Hope you're staying safe and well wherever you are. Today's video is the first of its kind because today I'm gonna be making a reaction or a response video to two other videos on YouTube that were brought to my attention by a student of mine on Udemy called uh, Darian Aber. So I hope I did not uh, mispronounce your name. If you're watching this, this video is for you. Thank you so much for bringing my attention to these two videos and basically what Darian here is saying is that there are two videos on YouTube where the person says that they're no longer using an SEO plugin on their WordPress website. Now these are the two videos right here. The first one is from a YouTuber called uh, Carl Broadbent and his title here says why I have deleted my SEO plugins and stopped using Rank Math. The second is from Passive Income Geek, whose title says, stop using SEO plugins, uh, this brings more traffic. Now, my initial reaction to these two videos when I saw the title was to say, these guys have no idea what you're talking about. How can you not use an SEO plugin on your WordPress website? However, one thing I have learned in life is that you need to pay more attention to people who disagree with you and uh, spend less time with people who agree with what you believe in because you actually tend to learn more from people who don't share your opinion, who have a different opinion to what you believe in. So I took my time and actually watched both videos from start to finish. I took about an hour or two to really think about what they, what they had said in the videos. And then after all these thoughts, I have to say that I respectfully still disagree with both of them, I believe that you should be using an SEO plugin on your WordPress website, and I'm gonna to explain to you exactly why. Now, both videos are pretty similar in what they have to say. They first of all say that we use SEO plugins primarily because we want to be able to craft meta titles and meta descriptions for our posts. Then they also say that you don't, we no longer need to do this because Google is smart enough to understand the best meta descriptions for your posts. Then they also say that uh, you know, when you have less plugins on your website, your website will be faster, will be more secure, which is true. However, let me quickly address this. Uh, Rank Math in particular is not a heavyweight plugin. It's not the kind of plugin that you would install on your WordPress website and will slow down your website. Same goes with Yoast as well. These are two plugins that have never had uh, issues with speed. So uh, as long as you're using very, very good hosting and you've done things like caching and all of that, it's not gonna matter whether or not you're using rank math or, or not, it's not gonna affect the speed of your website uh, noticeably. So let me just, uh, first of all, disagree with that uh, uh, opinion right there. Now, the main talking point for both videos is that we use SEO plugins for meta descriptions and we no longer need to do that because Google is smart enough to understand the best meta description for your post. What actually happens is that if you don't use Rank Math, if you don't use Yoast to craft your meta description, Google itself will decide what the best meta description is for your post. Now, I used to think in the past that Google would simply look for the best meta description and then use that meta description for every single person that searches for your article. However, it turns out that Google can actually tailor or customize the meta description based on the keywords that the user has used. So if user A used a particular set of keywords, Google will pick the most relevant piece of text from your post and then use that as the meta description. And if another user used a slightly different set of keywords, Google can actually use a different piece of text from the same article to present that as a meta description to the user. So Google is actually smart enough to be very, very flexible to choose the best meta description based on the exact keywords that each user has used. So that's something new that I learned. I used to think that Google would just use the exact same uh, meta description over and over again. Now, this might seem like the best thing to do. Just let Google decide what's best for my post. I mean, why not, right? I can definitely understand where they're coming from when they say that. However, there is one thing about, or two things about uh, meta descriptions which they failed to mention. One is the fact that we craft meta descriptions not just to impress Google or get to the first page of Google, but we craft meta descriptions by ourselves because we want to improve our CTRs, our click-through rates. When you're crafting your meta description, you want to entice the user to click on your article. Meta descriptions, that's the primary purpose. The primary purpose here is to increase your click-through rates, and yes, click-through rates do affect 
how Google will uh, rank your article. When Google says that a lot of people keep clicking on your article, Google will reward you and you know increase your ranking. So when you are the one who actually spends time to craft a meta description that you feel would be, would be best to improve click-through rates, you are in a much better position than allowing the Google AI to determine that for you. Because I don't think the Google AI would choose your meta description based on whether or not it feels that, oh, this might get the user to click on this article. It will do so thinking, okay, based on the keywords that the user has used, this will, might be the best meta description. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that you as a human, you are in a better position to understand or write meta descriptions that will get another human being to click on your article. That's point number one. Point number two is that when we write meta descriptions, it's not just for Google, it's also for other platforms as well. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See, I'm using Rank Math on my website and uh, let me just give you an example, right? So in addition to being able to craft meta descriptions for Google, with Rank Math, you can also craft meta descriptions for social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. From here right now, I can actually customize the title, the description, and also add a specific image that'll be used when this article is shared on Facebook. So I have that flexibility. Same goes with Twitter as well. I can choose the image. I can choose the, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, can, I can choose the kind of card type if I wanna use the summary card with a large image or just a summary card or an app card or things like that. So I have more flexibility in customizing my meta descriptions for other platforms as well, not just Google. That's one thing they did not uh, mention in the video. So that's why I would argue that you still need to use uh, SEO plugins. Now, this guy in particular, uh, the passive income uh, geek, he did make a reference to a particular uh, post. So in here, he was saying that, okay, he searched for using the keywords are, are ground not healthy. And it, it turns out that one of the articles that shows up on the very first page of Google is from a website called Consumer Reports. And his argument here was that when he searched for uh, ground nuts in the article, uh, there, there was no mention of the word ground nut. So basically this post, this post right here was ranking for uh, a keyword that doesn't even exist in the article, that keyword being uh, ground nut. However, the one thing he did not mention is how popular the website is. This is the website right here, consumerreports.org. Now, if you go to uh, neilpatel.com and you use his free SEO analyzer, you can actually search for websites and then determine just how popular these websites are. This is the report for <laughs> consumerreports.org. And as you can see right now, this is not a small website. This is a website that has existed for many, many years. And you can see right now, organic monthly traffic, over 7.7 .7 million, over 5.7 million backlinks. This is a very, very big website, a very, very popular website. And the truth is, it will get to a point when, when you cross a certain kind of threshold, when you've gotten so much backlinks and your ranking has become so strong. I mean, I'm talking about your website in general. It's not gonna really matter how well you've optimized a particular article. That article will always show up on the first page of Google based on your previous strength, based on your previous SEO strength. Google will come to a point where it will, it will trust you. It knows that, oh, if this article is coming from your website, based on the fact that you've been putting out so many, so many great articles, your backlinks are so many, Google will trust you and will provide you, the link to your article on, the first, on, on its first page. That's just the truth. I would be more impressed if he was able to find a new website, maybe a website that has maybe like a hundred backlinks or a website that was established maybe like a year ago that was able to rank for a keyword that wasn't even used in the article itself. I'll be more impressed by that. So yeah, that's the thing. I, I don't think the example he used here is that relevant because again, it's from a website that's very, very, very popular that is extremely strong when it comes to uh, SEO. So to be fair, he does also make some points about how Google was able to choose a very, very good meta description for one of his articles, which he didn't spend time crafting. 
a meta description for. But again, overall, uh, I don't agree with, with both of them because I feel that, again, when it comes to meta descriptions, it's not just about Google, it's about other platforms. You are in a much better situation when you are able to determine, okay, what keywords do I want to rank for? That's why you should always do your research before you begin to target keywords. You want to target keywords that have enough demand and also aren't that competitive. When you're able to get that magical combination and you write articles, you optimize your articles for such keywords, it's often the best uh, way to go. Again, I can understand where they're coming from. They feel that, hey, you know, letting Google decide what's best for your articles is the, is the way to go. But I respectfully disagree. And for Carl Broadbent in particular, this video was made back in June 17. And in the, vid in the video, he does admit that it's, uh, it's an experiment that is still in the early stages. And uh, unless I'm mistaken, he hasn't uploaded a new video talking about his results uh, thus far. So I'll be interested to learn whether or not his experiment was successful or he or if he has actually noticed a drop uh, in his uh, SEO rankings. And uh, last but not least, the authorities, I, I, I like to refer to them as authorities, you know, people like Neil Patel, uh, Mars.com, these guys, I have never heard any of them saying stuff like, you know, don't use SEO plugins. Now, that is not to say that they are always correct, but I'm just saying that other than these two fellows, um, I haven't seen other people, you know, saying that uh, they've, they've been able to get success without the use of SEO plugins. But this is where I would like to hear from you. If you are somebody who has actually been able to uh, optimize your articles and they've been appearing on the first page of Google without using an, an SEO plugin, please, I'd love to hear from you because I'm open to learning new things. So please let me know what your what your comments are and uh, I'd love to hear from you because like I said, this is a very, very interesting topic, but again, I respectfully disagree with uh, what uh, they have to say. So uh, one last thing I should mention uh, before I go, uh, SEO plugins do a lot more than just uh, meta descriptions and meta titles, okay? Uh, Rank Math, for example, offers you a lot more uh, features like, you know, the ability to optimize your images, the ability to edit your robots.txt file, your .htaccess file, you can create your directions, monitor your 404, uh, bad links, things like that. And you can also integrate uh, Google Analytics directly on your site. So uh, SEO plugins offer a lot more than just uh, meta descriptions and uh, meta titles. So that is it. So yeah, that's my video. I'd love to hear from you. Do you agree with what I've said in this video? Do you agree with them? I'd love to hear from you. Put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, share this video with anyone whom you feel might benefit from it. Thank you so much. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure. Stay safe and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.